Little Blue Valley Sewer District is a customer-governed clean water agency providing wastewater services that protect the region's public health and our environment. Jurisdictions in Jackson and Cass County collectively formed the Little Blue Valley Sewer District in 1968 to provide needed regional wastewater conveyance and treatment services. Its success prompted a 1992 expansion, creating the Middle Big Creek Sewer Subdistrict. District customers enjoy these clean water services at a value thanks to the foresight and collaboration of their leaders. These regional facilities deliver services at much lower cost than could be achieved independently by any one customer. Ever-increasing environmental protections do drive costs higher. However, the economy of scale of the district minimizes financial impacts on its customers. Today, the district encompasses a 388-square-mile surface area containing 365,000 people. The district's 14 customers have long-term service agreements and actively govern the operations. Each day, approximately 35 million gallons of wastewater is properly treated at the district's award-winning Atherton and Pleasant Hill treatment plants. The Atherton plant is the fourth largest facility in Missouri. The Pleasant Hill plant provides high-level treatment with disinfection. Clean water from the Atherton and Pleasant Hill plants is released into the Missouri River and Middle Big Creek, respectively. The operation of these large and complex systems requires 59 skilled employees who maintain operations 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. These individuals possess a variety of skills, with certain positions requiring operator's licenses from the state of Missouri. The clean water from each facility is monitored, analyzed, and reported under a state-issued discharge permit. Over 100 miles of underground lines, some as large as 10 feet in diameter, transport wastewater received from the customer systems to the Atherton plant. These lines generally follow the Little Blue River and run under a number of local lakes, such as Longview and Blue Springs Lakes. The wastewater flows by gravity to the Atherton plant, arriving at the plant approximately 40 feet below the ground surface. Incoming flow is pumped into the plant by eight large raw water pumps at the raw water pump station. Flow entering the treatment process goes to the Headworks building, where coarse and fine screens remove trash and debris that are not treatable or can damage downstream equipment. While many products are marketed as disposable, such as flushable wipes, in reality, these products can clog home plumbing, damage treatment plant equipment, and add materials that are not treatable. The wastewater system is intended only for water and biodegradable materials. Other types of wastes are solid wastes that must be disposed of at a landfill. Screenings from the Headworks building average approximately 12 tons of material each week. After the wastewater is screened, it flows to the primary clarifiers, which are large circular tanks. In a clarifier, materials that float such as grease are skimmed from the water surface, and solids that do not float are collected at the bottom of the clarifier. In essence, floating and suspended materials are removed from the water in the clarifier. Solids and clarified water are handled by different processes, so for now, we will follow the water path. Clarified water flows next to aeration basins, where aeration and friendly bacteria stabilize biodegradable materials. The oxygen is needed to sustain the friendly bacteria. These microorganisms, or bugs, react with suspended and dissolved organics, converting these materials to harmless carbon dioxide and water. This process stabilizes the organic matter in the treatment plant and prevents the material from entering the river where its decomposition would deprive fish and other aquatic life of needed oxygen. Throughout the treatment processes, a variety of tests are conducted by the district's EPA certified lab. In fact, over 44,000 tests a year are done to manage processes and ensure proper water quality. Water leaving the aeration basin flows to the secondary clarifiers, which are large circular tanks similar to the primary clarifiers. The materials collected from the bottom of the secondary clarifier is termed activated sludge, as this includes both organic material and microorganisms, or bugs. This activated sludge is recirculated to the aeration basin, where the bugs resume their stabilization of the incoming biodegradable materials in the water from the primary clarifiers. Periodically, a portion of the activated sludge is sent to the solids processing system due to the accumulation of stabilized matter. Water from the secondary clarifier is stabilized and free of suspended matter. However, there are disease-producing microorganisms that are not affected by the treatment processes. These unfriendly microorganisms are inactivated by ultraviolet light at the UV disinfection building. 
making the water leaving the UV disinfection building stabilized and disinfected and meeting the criteria for release to the environment. The Atherton treatment plant's clean water promotes a healthier and safer environment. Going back to the materials that are collected at the bottom of the primary and secondary clarifiers, what happens to all that sludge? The sludge from these clarifiers is a liquid containing significant suspended material. Free water is removed from the sludge by thickening, with the primary and secondary thickened sludge going to the sludge storage basin. Sludge is withdrawn from the storage tank and sent to a centrifuge, where centrifugal forces are used to further reduce water content. Typically, the solids content of the sludge is increased from 3% to 22% solids by this centrifuge. This drier sludge can be burned in the incinerator with no external fuel source. The incineration process reduces the volume of the sludge significantly with the final byproduct being an inert ash. The solids processing system begins with almost 1,500 tons of liquid sludge each day and ends with 6 tons of ash, a 99.6% reduction. The incinerator's exhaust gas with ash is routed through a wet scrubber where water particles trap the ash, allowing clean air to be released from the stack. The ash and water mixture, ash slurry, is then pumped to ash basins where ash settles out. Periodically, an ash basin is cleaned with the ash being taken to a landfill for final disposal. The district is continuing to explore potential beneficial uses of the ash, avoiding the costs and use of landfill volume. The district is committed to environmental stewardship and being a good neighbor. Its environmental stewardship is evidenced by the better than required affluent quality that is discharged and its energy conscience daily operations. Its commitment to being a good neighbor is evidenced by successful control of odors, a commitment to aesthetics, and its continuing upkeep of the facilities. Even after over $263 million of investment in infrastructure since 2003, the district continues to ever improve the performance of its systems and reduce its environmental impact. These commitments include protection of both air and water resources. A new initiative, the Phase 3 Improvements Program, involves the investment of $20 million in advanced air emissions controls for the incinerator. These controls will further reduce mercury, nitrogen oxides, and metals concentrations in the stack gases. Representatives from customer jurisdictions govern the district. Working together, we provide cost-effective regional wastewater services that protect our region's water-air resources, public health, and the environment.